All right, so uh, welcome everybody. So this is already, let me just quickly check. This is already 54th Flow seminar, where for those of you who are attending for the first time, Flow stands for Federated Learning One More Seminar, and it was created to provide a global online forum for the dissemination of the latest scientific research results in our aspect of federated learning. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce you our speaker, Elias Fatkulin, who will be talking about practical algorithmic extension of modern error feedback. So Elias is a master student at uh, Technical University of Munich, and he's about to graduate and join the PhD program at ETH Zurich. And a few technicalities before we start. So in case you have a question, please don't hesitate either to post it to the chat or just raise your hand and I'll try to unmute you. And also uh, this talk is recorded. Okay. So thank you, yes, please go ahead. Um, thank you, Samuel, for a warm introduction. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk about our fresh work um, on practical algorithmic extensions of uh, uh, error feedback mechanism, which was proposed um, recently in a few form and uh, some work. Um, and before I start, I want to introduce my uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, so here is uh, Igor, uh, Igor Sekalov, uh, Eduard Gorbunov, Jitze Lee and Peter Richtarik. Uh, there. So most of them uh, are now uh, affiliated with CAST and I also get to know them as a part of uh, um, internship program at uh, CAST. And I want to thank uh, everyone for, for this opportunity and uh, great work. Uh, so now let's move on to the actual part of the presentation. And uh, um, <clears throat> So if you are not new to this seminar, you've probably seen this slide many, already many times, but I wanna uh, repeat this uh, to, to keep the, everyone on, on the same page. So we are in the, in the setting of this uh, training uh, supervised federated learning model, uh, which means that we, um, our function f, which we try to min minimize, uh, has a finite sum uh, of n functions, where n uh, is attributed to um, um, to a number of devices where like and each fi, each function fi is uh, stands for some loss function uh, on data d di. Um, and this data is stored on some uh, particular device i. Um, and i goes through uh, one to n. And um, yes, and all right, and, and each FI, uh, so each, each of these um, functions share, or devices share uh, some model and the, um, which could be like um, a neural network or something, something like that. Uh, and the number of these parameters can be um, huge uh, as well as the number of devices. Uh, and uh, what, what, uh, what differs from the standard distributed optimization setting is that we do not assume any similarity between uh, functions fi's and uh, so they can be uh, completely different so we're in a heterogeneous data regi regime so the most um, basic method to solve this uh, problem distributed function is the distributed gradient descent uh, so th this is the one up the, the update rule of gradient the distributed gradient descent or dgd uh, where gamma is uh, some step size, and the, here's you see the average of the gradients on each um, on each device, and so you may see that this. Um, so how how the training process works is uh, in distributed fashion is uh, like let's say if we are in the case when we have three devices, uh, each device uh, has some computer computing power, and it uh, it sends. Uh, um, it can uh, it calculates the gradient of function of, 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 of on, on this local data uh, at uh, iterate xt, and then it transmits um, 
and we broadcast this uh, information or this gradient to, to the server. And the server aggregates this uh, information and makes, uh, makes the step. So the main issue here, uh, this method is, um, uh, is that these uh, gradients are d-dimensional vectors um, because X, the parameter X is d-dimensional and uh, they don't have to be sparse um, in general. And uh, th thus this communication um, is the bottleneck and mainly uh, uh, this uplink, so-called uplink uh, communication from uh, devices to the server is, is, is usually a problem. Uh, so the most like the naive way to fix this problem uh, would be like distributed compressed gradient descent, which means that we apply some contractive compress, compress, compressor, um, which is uh, some abstract map from RD to RD. Yes, there, there are examples of like popular example, the stop k, rent k, sign um, of each coordinate, um, and uh, um, and 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 then one can just uh, compress this um, um, gradient uh, into some into something uh, something sparse maybe or which something which is easier to communicate, and then um, server aggregates this information and then makes a step. So that would be nice. Uh, and this works in some cases, uh, for example, when C is an unbiased compressor. Um, however, mm, it doesn't work in general. So by, by why, I, why I'm telling it's uh, not working in general is because there are these beautiful counterexamples to this um, when this method doesn't work. So they, they, they were found by first, I uh, think, uh, in, in this work, uh, error feedback fi fixes sign SGD and so on in 2019. And also like another example, even more powerful, powerful in my uh, view, uh, where this method even uh, diverges exponentially from the optimum uh, for simple like two dimensional quadratic functions. Um, and the, the main, the key issue here is like, um, uh, because we do not, as, as I say, we do not assume any unbiasedness in this um, contractive compressor. Um, but we still want to use the biased compressors because uh, uh, they first they behave uh, um, well in a single node setting. So these examples um, where this method can diverges are like in really distributed setting where n is at least two. Um, and secondly, why we want to uh, use a bias compressor is because uh, intuitive, we have an intuition that um, having like unbiased uh, compressors first is less restrictive, of course, and also we, we may, for example, in, in case of top K um, compressors, we, we may think that it uh, retains more information about the um, gradient. So it, 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 we have an intuition that it should work better than unbiased. Uh, counterparts like uh, random k, for example. So, um, but then this is not so pessimistic because uh, there is already known fix uh, to this problem, so called error feedback mechanism. And here, here is like a, a summary of uh, recent works um, in non-convex regime uh, where this error feedback was analyzed. So it was first proposed in 2014 by Fra Frank Zeide, um, and and there it was uh, back then it was studied uh, found like yeah discovered and studied empirically only, so that there, you you won't find any theory in this paper. Um, so and then it's there was a long break until uh, 2018 or 19 um, when um, there was no theory for error feedback at all. So maybe no one was interested, but it's still. Mm, was an interesting issue um, or why it works in practice. And then uh, there, there appeared like 2018, 19, there appeared like first analysis or error feedback. Um, um, yeah, so this works uh, for, this suggests uh, at least only two works, uh, which I think are important, uh, like theoretically, but there were also like many other works um, which extended uh, the 
uh, analysis of error feedback to different settings like decentralized optimization, uh, bidirectional compression, and many other um, um, many other set interesting settings. However, uh, the the problem was that uh, this this works essentially assumed um, um, two like made two strong assumptions. Uh, uh, like, for example, bounding gradients uh, of you know, um, of the yeah, bounded gradients or some iterative dependent um, um, assumptions uh, or like yeah, there, there were like there are many many different um, things that were suggested uh, and also like even with these uh, assumptions. Um, in a distributed uh, setting, um, the weeks were not so good. Um, uh, and recently, very recently, in this uh, EF, like this Peter Richtarik, Igor Sekalov, and myself proposed a new method called Area Feedback 21. And I'll refer to this paper as Area Feedback EF 21 paper. And they redesigned the error feedback and improved the analysis in some sense. So let's see what, 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 what was done and what's the difference between the like, original error feedback and error feedback 21. So um, of course, both of these methods were analyzed in distributed setting as well. But here I just, uh, for, for the sake of simplicity, I'll show you a single a node setting. So the update rule of uh, error feedback um, looks like that. So you, you need to maintain uh, two sequences additionally to x, uh, so it's e, t, and w, t. Um, so this stands for error, and w, t stands for um, compressed of some vector, compressed vector. Um, and then error feedback 21 is looks at the first glance very differently. Uh, so a gradient estimator g, t. Uh, is computed by this recursive formula, where you, you may see that we do not compress some. We, can, we do also compress some vector, but we actually compress not something that is like proportional to the gradient, but it's of order the difference of the gradient. So it, it, we, we compute the gradient at point x t plus one, and then we subtract uh, the previous gradient estimator, then compress this difference, and then add up the previous g t. Okay, so um, and so in this work, Peter um, and the authors show that actually these methods, even though they look not so um, similar, they actually somehow related. So for some class of compressors, contractive compressors, which are deterministic, positively homogeneous, and additive, this method actually coincides. But the, the, this is not practical about practical, um, so it's just theoretical interest, um, this theorem, because uh, for the popular choices of um, C um, uh, doesn't satisfy these properties. Uh, for example, the top key doesn't, is not additive, uh, um, as you may notice. So, all right. Um, then, um, in the, in, and, and in their work, they show that in distribute, even in distributed setting, you may uh, get one over t uh, rate uh, uh, um, of convergence in a general non-convex smooth case. Um, and this doesn't require any additional assumptions like about the gradients and something like this. All right. Uh, so I think, yeah, at this point, I, I may stop for a minute, uh, just like, if somebody has a question on this slide or something else. As a reminder, please, if you have a question, pause it to chat or just raise your hand and then I'll try to unmute you. Okay. Thank you, Samuel. Um, yeah, then I'll go. Yeah, forward. there is one question. Okay. Yeah, there is a question by Tim Don, uh, and the question is whether the one over t radius, I guess, for strongly complex functions. Um, uh, no, no, it is um, one over t rate is for 
a non -con general non-convex function, which means that um, a squared norm of the gradient um, um, evolves like um, one over t with some constants like Lipschitz constant and um, times the. Sorry, I I missed a um, uh, couple of uh, 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 first few minutes in the beginning. So this is for the centralized setting, right? So there's no distributed here yet, right? Uh, so, so it is for centralized setting, but it is like it, it shows, um, so it is for a centralized setting, yes, but distributed, yeah. So, I mean, uh, here in this slide, I show single mode setting for simplicity, but the, the, the theory, of course, works for, I mean, not of course, but so there, 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 is, uh, there are studies for distributed centralized setting, yes. All right. Thank you. Yes. So the theory for um, error feedback also captures some decentralized settings, but there you usually get with some additional assumptions, you get a rate something like that, so, which is lower when y over t, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, then, yeah, if there are no more questions. Mm, I'll move on with the mm, with our contributions. So basically, what we do in this paper mm, is uh, we extend EF twenty one, which was proposed mainly like in a few form uh, with full gradients and no additional uh, blows and whistles, as we call it. Uh, so and in this work, we add six. Uh, extensions, which I'll uh, talk about more in detail about each of them. And uh, you may see that three of these methods uh, are new. So uh, there was never, uh, uh, at least we, we are not aware of any method which uh, combined bias compressors, like, with, like, error, like error feedback with variance reduction, error feedback with partial participation, and error feedback with proximal setting. So, and three of our extensions are uh, not new. So the, the worst studies with like bidirectional compression and error feedback, and momentum and error feedback. But in some sense, um, uh, our analysis is better, but I will uh, talk about each of the cases individually later. Okay. So Ilyash, we have a one question by the team. Let me just unmute you. Yes, thanks. Uh, sorry for interrupting again. Um, so just a, a quick question. Um, so if uh, we can have the case of, for example, like a local HGD, uh, do, do you think does this uh, compression apply there? Like when you exchange the address instead of exchanging the gradient? Change iterates instead of the gradient? Well, yeah. uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I mm -hmm. get your question. Actually, oh. so I mean, uh, so so we, we we don't. If the question is about local methods, um, where yeah, you, yeah. you do you do yeah. like local steps at each uh, device, and right, right, uh, right. But, but but then compress it and then and then send to the server. Right. Uh, so uh, I I didn't look into this and this. So I didn't look into. Um, in this direction, but uh, yeah, the, the, the definitely you, you may know there are like mm, methods like yeah, I guess scaffold, right? Uh, and like, I'm not very into this. Uh, um, the, I don't know much about local methods to be honest, but I know that this error feedback, original error feedback, was analyzed uh, with a local gradient descent, but in some sense, uh, but um, to, to I, I didn't look into this. So if it yeah. Doesn't... yeah, that's fine. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but I think that that would be a very interesting future extension, like number seven, maybe. You know? <laughs> so yeah, I think that this is also a very important uh, question if it works together with local steps. Okay, so if there are no more questions, um, I will move on to to the next slides. Uh, yeah. Okay. So extension number one. So it's a stochastic approximation. Um, so this is a very important extension. Um, so where you basically uh, replace your uh, full gradient with uh, some mini batch uh, 
uh, of, uh, of yeah, mi mi some mini batching, um, a stochastic uh, gradient estimator. And then the update rule, like on the server, looks the same as like that. And then uh, each device uh, performs this type of update, which the, whereas the only difference is in this yellow part, uh, where this we, we replace full gradient with this mini batch of independent samples, a particular device. So this uh, extension was already analyzed in the like EF21 paper, uh, but uh, here we, we uh, suggest like an analysis so with a more general, you know, more general framework. So we, we make this more general assumption as to have the gradients. Um, so the, so the, where this uh, stochastic gradient uh, is upper bounded by these three quantities with uh, some constants uh, A, B, and C. Um, okay, uh, but and this uh, may look uh, not so, um, for, for, for those who did never seen this paper by Ahmed and Peter, this might look um, weird, but actually it's not something like additional uh, weird assumption actually is very natural in the sense that if it, it can it contains like spe as a special case case of bounded variance which is like a very canonical example of uh, for SGD so you just need to plug in these constants and then you recover bounded variance and uh, in but in the but why, why this bounded variance is not enough in some sense is that because uh, when you assume that each fi on each node has like its finite sum form itself, then um, bounded variance property doesn't hold like um, uh, for free. So just like then it, it is like additional assumption. But with this, um, in this with this assumption, you may see that uh, in, in a finite sum regime, um, this like many for many sampling methods like mini batching methods. Um, it, it holds, uh, so you may find like um, constants A, B, and C here. So, but if you want to le learn more, you, you better consult on this paper where they describe this. Okay, then, so our rate for, so that I'll show a result then uh, of how EF21 SGD works. So we combine this um, error feedback, new error feedback mechanism with SGD. And then after this number of iterations, where we by O, big O, we had some multiplicative absolute constant. Um, so then you will get um, this epsilon stationary point. Uh, so yeah, so there, there are some constants here, which you might uh, not be familiar with. So L tilde by L tilde, we define this uh, square root of the average squares Li, where Li is the smoothness constants for each Fi. Uh, delta naught uh, is uh, distance to the optimum by function in the functional sense. Uh, and alpha is, I already introduced to talk about this alpha in the beginning of the talk. It's a contractive uh, compress, like a contractive parameter of the for compressor C. And yes, yeah, so this uh, result actually uh, to be Honest, this uh, to be fair, uh, this is achieved by large batch sizes, uh, and as, as as we understand this, it's, this is like a limitation caused by this biasness of our compressor, and we, which at least we do not know how to how to overcome. Um, but still, it's uh, we get this rate one over epsilon squared. Okay, and then. Uh, like, yes, but if we do not take these large batch sizes, uh, then we will converge to the local um, optimum, um, um, to, to the local optimum, uh, uh, yeah, to, to some neighborhood, of, like, which is controlled by parameters like sigma, for example. And uh, in the case of uh, finite time regime, um, so variance reduction methods are known to be helpful for that, right? So th this is the, my, our second extension. So I'll remind you that uh, we're in this uh, distributed system regime where n is the number of devices. And now each fi uh, has a finite, finite sum. So uh, ij is like a local data form. And this uh, m 
uh, is the number of local data points. So, and it's known that for this type of methods, uh, for, for this uh, for this setting, like uh, there there are um, there are powerful uh, variance reduced methods like SAG, SVRG, SAGA, PAGE, and many others. This is a whole zoo of these uh, variance reduction methods. Um, and now I'm going to introduce you, like just recall one of them, which is called PAGE. Um, I just remind you how it, how this PAGE method works. So. Uh, in distributed setting again, um, we uh, update our model uh, with this formula, where VIT is a local uh, estimate of the gradient, which is computed in the following way. So we flip the coin with probability PI, where PI is small, this is proportional to one over M, where M is the local number of uh, models, uh, data points. And then if the outcome is one, uh, then we compute full gradient. So this happens where not so often. Uh, and if, but if, if the outcome is zero, then we compute a recursive uh, estimate of, uh, of the gradient um, by adding to the previous one uh, this, differ this difference. Okay. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we, we call this page estimator on device I. And this, why, why I show you this method, but not SVRG or Saga, uh, because, because like for non-convex smooth problems, um, this um, page estimator is optimal and it has uh, this kind of complexity uh, where M is uh, again, a number of um, local data points. And this is known to be not improvable um, in some sense. Yeah, you can remove this, but uh, this uh, square root of M cannot, be improved and you may consult this paper to learn more about that. Okay, so now I introduce you EF21 page method, which is just um, actually a very simple mm, mm, modification of page or EF21, as you may wish. So we just on top of this uh, page method, so which is blue and orange boxes, uh, we add on top EF21 mechanism. So we, we compute EF21 not, uh, estimator not uh, with respect to full gradient, but uh, with respect to page estimator. All right. So, and then we plug in here this red term, which is, uh, which we get after these recursive calculations. All right. So, and, and, and for this, um, uh, we have uh, also a rate, uh, which is uh, looks very nice. Uh, so here you may see that after t, so here you, you, you yes, yeah, so after t it equals this number of iterations. Uh, so here you, you already know what is L wave from previous slides. So you already remember what is alpha. So you know what is delta not. But the only new things are here uh, is this. Um, First is M, so local number of data points. And this is very similar to what we had in page, um, the square root of M. And then you, you have again, um, an expectation, um, a stationary point, so a stationary point. Yes, so, and, and also one more thing, which I didn't talk about is this um, calligraphic uh, L wave. It's, uh, some, it's a notion of like L smoothness, which uh, I don't want to go too much details. It is presented in, it's introduced in this so similar method is an arena paper, uh, but this is not, not the main issue here because it's, it's a very natural assumption. Um, and here it's, it's important that we get this square root of M and one over alpha and still uh, and, and without large midi batches. So you, 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 you only need a batch size of one to, to achieve this result. Okay, so now if there are no questions in this part, let's um, go um, move on to extension three, which is also a very important um, general extension um, in the setting of uh, federated, in the context of federated learning uh, this is called partial participation. Mm, uh, so the, the main motivation is that 
when you have millions of uh, devices um, spread out around the world, it's not every device might be available and um, and some devices might be pretty slow. That's why um, it's it's not reasonable to um, rely on each of them uh, to participate on each uh, communication round. That's why we try to model this situation um, by sampling a subset of devices, ST, um, uh, with the probability of each device being in this set equal to PI. So this basically we were we consider arbitrary proper sampling. So we, we do not assume any particular assumptions on a independence of the devices or some of the sampling or something else. We, we keep it general. And yes, and, and then after the update rule of EF21 PP um, is the following. If 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 the node if device is selected to com communicate and work in this round, then it can use the full gradient at this point, and then can and, and also then um, compress the difference. Yes, and calculates basically the EF21 estimator. But if it doesn't uh, work, it, it's, if it's not chosen, then it doesn't have to work at all. So it just this this step is nothing, right? It's just like mm, assigning previous variable, which, which means it doesn't change. Um, yes. Um, uh, okay, then what, what do we have uh, from the theory side for this type of method uh, is um, the following. So after T, uh, number of uh, communication rounds or iterations, which is the same uh, here, we, uh, which is equal to this. So here you already know this L wave, delta nub, and what is alpha. Uh, the only thing you don't know is this P. So, but P, uh, I assume that this all P uh, I's are equal. Mm, so each, pro each device uh, is chosen by probability P. Um, and then we have uh, this, uh, then we achieve stationary point after this number of iterations. So, which is uh, basically, which is very good because we, uh, if, if we allow some uh, fraction of uh, devices to not communicate, then it means that um, it doesn't hinder our uh, uh, convergence rate in, in the sense of a number of um, com computing com like, uh, per communications between uh, workers. And workers and servers. Um, okay, uh, then uh, we'll go to another very important uh, extension, which is called bidirectional compression. Um, so, as I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, uh, uh, the usually the main uh, bottleneck of uh, um, uh, training uh, distributed optimization methods uh, is the communication prompts devices to the server. Um, so let's say we solve this problem by EF21 um, or EF21 SGD or some method of this type. And then we, we can send uh, some compressed gradient to the server. But uh, in this type of all ty this type of method I mentioned before, um, server itself needs to communicate uh, the model back to to each device. So this mm, communication, uh, in many things, settings, this communication is uh, mm, said to be yeah, not, not so important, but there are like cases where, where it is important. It's, so, it's also good, would be good to somehow sparsify this communication. All right, so, but then uh, bidirectional compression types of methods um, are instrumental for this purpose. And, uh, the, the, but th this is, as I said, not, um, not new in the sense that the, the was a study of uh, bidirectional com bias compress compression in conjunction with error feedback before. So in this work, the method called double squeeze, um, uh, there is an, a nice analysis uh, which assumes this contractive compression. So no, not there is no biasness, uh, unbiasedness 
uh, and bias property here, but they assume something called bounded magnitude of error. So, so they assume for the C for an, any X, uh, the, there is a bound not only depending on this uh, compressed vector, but also there is some positive number delta which for, for which it holds. But uh, apparently this doesn't hold for all type of uh, popular compressors which we want to apply. For example, it doesn't hold for top K automatically. Um, yes, it doesn't even hold for some unbiased um, estimators. So it doesn't hold for sine SGD. But yes, yeah, so to be uh, to be fair, the, 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 there are interesting um, cases when this holds, like integer rounding um, and so on, and, and other compressors. Uh, but even with this uh, um, somehow somewhat restrictive assumption, um, they, um, for general non convex smooth functions, they obtain this type of, uh, this type of rate, so one over t. Uh, but, uh, we, but we wish one over, well, yeah, one over t to the power of two thirds, but we wish to get one over t. So then we, uh, we pr propose the following method, which we call EF21 BC. Uh, so what happens here is a, a very natural way to apply EF21, uh, EF21 compressor uh, twice, once on server, and once in each, on each device. So, so each, so like server and devices perform this update. And then server uh, aggregates information from in some like, in some way, same way as it does EF21. That is, it gets this GI tilde T plus one. It aggregates like it, it averages it. And then it applies EF21 estimator to this with um, some compressor, which is owned by ma uh, master server. Um, okay, but then what happens on devices is actually very similar to what happened. It's, it's exactly the same what happens here in EF21, so without any change. So we just compute a full gradient on each device and apply EF21 compressor. And then we communicate this um, sparse vector so that server can aggregate this GI tilde T plus one and the iteration continues in a similar fashion. Okay, so this is like a very basic explanation of what the EF21 BC does. And here is again the rate, which is, I'm sure you're not uh, any of you surprised because it's basically the same rate T is a proportion to one over epsilon squared, where you all quantities you already know, uh, but there are two quantities, alpha W and alpha M. So uh, alpha M, uh, alpha W is uh, basically the, what we had before, we called before alpha, which is compressor, compressor, compressor parameter on uh, worker side. And alpha M capital is a compressor compression parameter on the master side. All right, so if we compare it to double squeeze, so first double squeeze had some additional assumptions which we lift basically, and we also improve the rate from this to one over T. All right, I see that uh, Eduard Garbanov uh, raise a hand. So Samuel, yeah, let me just unmute him, yeah. Seeing I have enough time to, to answer yeah. questions. Um, hello, Elias. In just uh, uh, comment, uh, cl cl clarification. Uh, as far as I remember in double squeeze paper, uh, the authors uh, do not assume that operator is contractive and instead they assume this property uh, from the previous slide. So. So like not an additional, yeah, bounded magnitude. So it's Maybe like, uh, uh, it's think? instead of contract contractive properties, they just assume the second one. Ah, really? Okay, maybe then. Yeah, so uh, it, it's uh, it's in the, uh, in the proof and in the statement of the uh -huh. results, but 
But yes, they also discussed that uh, there are another uh, assumptions. Yeah, so mm -hmm. actually, they assume only the second one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Me. okay, okay. Th thank you, Edward. Yeah, this was very important comment. It's, it's just a small clarification. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then, then, like in some sense, yeah, I, I was wrong here. Should admit. So, in some sense, um, this assumption is not like strictly worse than can, like what what we make, right? So, in some cases, it, it might be as in also like interesting to to assume to to work with this assumption, but not but, but forget about this contractive compressor. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Yes, all right. Uh, um, then let's uh, talk about extension number five, uh, which is momentum. Uh, so momentum, as you may all know, this is a very important um, tool technique to speed up the convergence of the methods. So, the, so the, 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 it all backs to goes back to uh, the. Uh, method uh, called heavy ball momentum proposed in back in 1964 uh, by Boris uh, Pollack. Um, and since then, there was like um, a lot of works, uh, including this uh, Adam method, where it empirically showed this um, momentum or accelerated type of methods uh, um, help a lot uh, for convergence. And this is one way to write down this particular type of uh, accelerated method. Uh, um, so basically you, you do some, you multiply a previous iterate V uh, with some uh, parameter eta, which is between zero and one, and then add up a new computer gradient and then iterate with this V instead of gradient. All right, and then, uh, so, and, and now we, all we do is uh, apply, uh, um, apply this uh, in conjunction with EF21 uh, mechanism. Uh, so, so this is pure EF21, uh, or oh, the pure heavy ball method, uh, where instead of the gradient, we, uh, we have the average of uh, uh, GITs, which are, just simply the computed um, gradient as the EF21 gradient estimate. All right, and then for this type of acceleration, uh, we have again one over epsilon square complexity. Uh, so all quantities you already know, L tilde, delta naught, alpha is also contractive compressor, compression uh, parameter. The only thing you, you haven't seen uh, in this uh, type of formula is eta, which is, as I said, between zero and one. And uh, in experiments, we, we choose something strictly less than one and see that it, it, it works. It works pretty well, and it's indeed it speed up convergence in practice. Um, yeah, but in theory, as, as it is known that it's not, one, one over epsilon square complexity is not improvable by in, in non-convex case uh, by, um, by accelerated type of methods. Um, uh, okay, uh, so, and the last but not least extension is proximal setting. So to talk about proximal setting, um, I'll uh, remind you what is a compass optimization pro problem. Uh, so now we, instead of minimizing the finite sum, we, uh, of fi, we add some regularizer r, r of x, which uh, is convex, unlike fi, it is convex, but it could be not smooth. So, and also like there are two notions which we will need. One is a proximal update or a sub, um, solution of the problem. Uh, so it's basically instead of just uh, iterating xt minus gamma gt, we will solve at each iteration this type of uh, um, minimization problem, uh, which in some cases, in, for some choices of R, uh, can be resolved even analytically, or you can run a problem to, to solve this. 
And if, to, to evaluate our convergence, uh, we'll use this uh, very common notion of general mapping, generalized gradient mapping, um, which is yeah, x minus prox, x minus gamma, the gradient at point x. Um, and yes, indeed, this evaluation matrix, uh, metric because um, uh, you may find in, literature, in the literature that uh, it is zero if and only if the, this is station point of the, the, this problem. Okay, um, and then, uh, so the method is very like, straightforward modification of EF21. Uh, so here, this is like, we've seen this green back box already many times during the talk. And uh, this is the only change here. So instead of uh, this update, we, we compute a prox of this function, of, of this uh, vector. Um, yes, yeah, so this is very standard. And then again, the convergence result slide is the same as for EF21, actually. There are no even additional parameters, which you, ah, oh, yeah, no, actually for delta not, uh, before it was F small, but now it's the, the, because we, we, are try, we want to minimize um, phi capital, but not F. And the convergence is now in terms of this introduced uh, gradient mapping, but not gradient of F. Um, all right, now, so the, in this slide, um, we have a summary of uh, all I talk about. Uh, so basically there are like six, these six extensions which are marked new and we compare them to, so it's SGD, F21 SGD, F21 page, F21 PP and so on. And we compare them in this table to the previous state of the art and yeah, so this is basically it's either new proposed method or in some sense, as for example, we discussed with uh, Edward now, um, uh, to, to in some cases as bidirectional compression, it's in some sense it is better because it uses different assumption. It has a better rate uh, in terms of T. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll stop. Uh, so I'll go next with experiments, but before I think if you have any questions on theory, I'll pause for a minute. So it seems there are you know, no questions, but maybe we can wait the like extra, yeah, extra minute or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So this not to be the case, so probably I scare somebody with this um, table, uh, which is, um, yeah, a bit maybe not so easy to comprehend from the first sight. Uh, so let, let's go to something uh, more visual uh, to experiments. So here we first run uh, experiments on uh, non-convex logistic regression. It is non-convex because we add this non-convex regularization here. And we consider this um, yeah, data sets from the SVM. Uh, okay, so we conducted quite extensive experiments. Uh, I'm not going to point out here at each uh, uh, plot, but let's focus, let's, yes, let, let's look at this first experiment, which we conducted with variance reduction. Uh, and, and focus on this um, mm, red circle where you may see convergence of uh, ter terms of local uh, ter total number of uh, bits sent from clients to server. So it's uplink communication, which is most uh, problematic in most cases. So this is like a zoomed inversion of this uh, plot. And you may see that here we compare a EF21 page method uh, with uh, this 64x means uh, the step size multiplier, 25% uh, means that we use 25% of local data uh, on, on, a, on a particular client. 
Uh, and you may see that, for example, with small mini batches, uh, page method uh, works, uh, the EF21 page works, yeah, or performs as expected, the EF21 SDD, while EF21 SDD is like, stuck at some, uh, at some point. Okay, uh, and then the experiment number two is the effect of partial participation of devices. So, um, and again, let's look at one of the plots. For example, here we fixed uh, K equals two, which is like roughly 1% uh, for mushrooms data set. Um, and we see that in this blue uh, line here is, EF21 with full gradients, and which all methods are with full gradients here, but with full EF21 is a, with full participation with, of all 100 workers, while um, other um, methods uh, differ from EF21 in that, uh, for example, here it is an example only 50% of. Um, worker uh, devices, but still get very similar convergence rate in terms of number of bits sent um, per worker on average. All right, so we also did some, um, perform some deep learning experiments and larger problems. So here is one example of uh, plot uh, for which, which compares how error feedback SGD, error feedback 21 SGD, um, like work com compares to the, the methods, similar methods with added moment, heavy ball momentum. And you may see that uh, this blue and green line are stuck in terms of test accuracy on ResNet 18, uh, C410. Um, and, but like this, as accelerated methods, perform better than not exam. I mean, this is also like not so much surprise. And this is like, I also performed experiments on like EF21 plus method, which I didn't talk about this time, but it's covered in the previous paper, EF21 paper by Peter and Riftarik et al. So, and, 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 and this is like some more aggressive variant of EF21, but um, heavy ball momentum also, also helps convergence um, quite dramatic, I would say. Okay, so I think I should stop at this point. Um, so we still have some time for discussion. Um, um, if, if anyone has questions, it's the right time to, um, to speak up. Thank you, that's very excellent talk. And so please, if you have a question or comments, just raise your hand or just post your question to chat. So in the meantime, I would start maybe. So, so I have actually two questions. First one, uh, so do you think that there is some important extension missing? Or you think that you cover everything that's kind of important? Uh, you know, Samuel, it's at some point, um, at some point you just needed to stop. <laughs> <laughs> because yes, it's already a long talk <laughs> uh, and a long paper. Um, but of course, I think um, there are many, um, still many things which can be done, extended uh, with this EF21, because uh, the history of like study of EF original error feedback is like pretty, pretty rich, I would say. Um, so the, they were like decentralized methods analyzed uh, by Anastasia Koloskov and their team um, and also these local methods can be I think uh, seen in a bit different angle now so I think the theory there could be many more extensions now so. and uh, yeah mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you thank you for the question I think it's very, very important and then another question, so, 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 uh, yeah, so would you, yeah, we have, so let me just first unmute Constantin and we can ask first. 
It's a big question. Thank you. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned uh, the red and mapping functions several slides ago, and you mentioned uh, that you need to use this, like, let's say, uh, fixed point iteration property. Uh, but uh, uh, did uh, in the theory that you have constructed uh, some characteristics of the function G gamma play some role also? Maybe some, I don't know, minimum maximum value of this function or some and other characteristics of this function or the thing that you have used on the fixed point iteration property? Um, yeah, thank you for, for a question, Constantine. Uh, I think it was, uh, the analysis was um, quite, uh, I would say natural in the sense that uh, all you needed to do is like re basically like uh, replace full gradient with this, mm. you know, you, you may think of this gradient mapping as, as gradient itself, right? I mean, it's all itself has the same dimension and stuff. Uh, but I, I'm not sure if I understand your question maybe, because like, I, I, I would say it was quite a natural way. And also you, in the end, you also get convergence in terms of this um, gradient mapping. Mm, but may, maybe I, I'm not uh, getting your question. Uh, like, what, what do you mean by, by mm, some characteristics of this gradient mapping? Uh, so, uh, so when I applied uh, some, uh, like, let's say, proximal algorithms, I uh, just uh, use a gradient mapping or implicitly uh, gradient mapping uh, but yeah my, my question is in fact uh, why in, uh, in is, is it I, uh -huh. yeah, go it's, it's, yeah it's just uh, like brainstorming questions so, mm -hmm. is, for example it, we know some like let's say specific uh, formula for evaluate uh, explicitly uh, proximal operator like with closed form solution uh, like in quadratic case or in other cases, or like the L1 case mm -hmm. threshold. Then. So yes. uh, maybe there are it's just assumptions. So maybe there are some some important characteristics of this function, uh, proximal operator that uh, can highlight in theory. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if. if um... If, you know, if, if I uh, understand you, to be honest, but uh, like for, for me, it's just like this, we introduce at least in, within the scope of, of, of theory, which, uh, which we did here, it's, uh, uh, it's like the, the intuition is just like, okay, we, we cannot compute the gradient of, of this function phi capital, because there's, there is this non-smooth part. And that's why we, we introduce some other evaluation metric uh, to, to, to measure convergence and and um, okay okay uh, okay yeah. fine yeah I just uh, I, th I think it uh, I think there, there is something in, in in some ideas in your question which I, I don't maybe not getting uh, right now but I think yeah okay it, just, it would just be I, to to discuss that afterwards right okay. the idea is actually just uh, can we gain more if go to the structure of proximal period uh -huh. so proximal Operator has enough properties uh, for theory, non-expansiveness, uh, uh -huh. point property. Maybe it's enough for construct theory, but the question is, can we gain more? Uh -huh. So you mean in in particular cases when like yeah, uh -huh, yeah. R, R has some structure. Right? So yeah. I, I I I didn't think about that. So yeah. okay. So I guess we still have a time for at least one question. I, yeah, I can have the, the second one. So uh, what do you think, the, the, do you think that the gap between error feed, standard error feedback and error feedback 21 is just because of suboptimal analysis or do you think that this gap is not fixable? Mm. Huh. That's a... Uh... That's a good question. 
but like so many <laughs> it's just like so many smart people were thinking about error feedback and it's, it's seems like it's <laughs> it might be really tough to to get uh, something more desirable from the few like original error feedback um yeah so should, yeah so maybe from the experiments because i i, I don't remember like you had one i think where you just compare like error feedback 21 so did you actually experience uh so, so in your experiments you see that one would be better than the other like yeah, that's yeah, this that's, error feed that, that's a good question samuel uh so uh, in fact so when we um i did experiments for this ef21 paper um uh, we, we we did more extensive comparison between EF and, and EF21, and we saw that like in, in for small problems, uh, uh, EF21 is much better. Like for logistic regression, mm -hmm. non-convex case, it's also like polarly series functions. It's it's much better. But when you run uh, starting running when you start uh, doing experiments like for larger problems, you may so I also included it here, you don't really see like a stark difference. Like for example, compare blue line and green line and you, you see that, yeah, okay, this is like within standard deviation, right? Uh, but even within standard deviation, <laughs> the error, like original error feedback is like very slightly better. And so, but here it's, okay, here for accelerated method, EF21 is like a bit better in the beginning, but it, they end up almost the same in after like 30 epochs or so. And, and like, it's, it's really hard to tell why it, it doesn't work, you know, as, as, as like much better as well as uh, like for uh, smaller problems. So I don't know, maybe it's my programming skills or, <laughs> or, uh, or I don't know, maybe there is some like sparsity of these data sets or something like that or not sparsity. Maybe there could be many issues there. And I think that, that, that more, more should be devoted to, like more time should be devoted to, to experiments in this sense. Um, and but at least from what I've seen, it's error feedback 21 is not worse even for large problems, which is already satisfactory, at least for me, because it has better theory and is better also for small problems. But okay, so maybe we're not just, just not lucky for to, to see like very strong difference in large problems. Oh, yeah, but this is a very, very like important question, I think. Thank you. So maybe there's one other question or comment. So it seems there isn't. So thank you, Elias, again for your great talk. It was a pleasure to host you. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And hope to see you all next week. Thank you again. And see you all next week. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you.